everyone. Phoenix Knight from the future here. I'm going to forget to mention this in the intro, but like all of my other flippin' rights that I've done on the channel, you can play this one as a play-along as well. As always, a link to the score sheet will be in the description down below. So you can print off the score sheet and play along with the same cards and scoring cards that I have, and let me know what your score is in the comments section down below. With that slight correction out of the way, enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Phoenix Knight here. Welcome to the channel, and welcome to a new playthrough on the channel. First of all, I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas with your families or however you celebrated, assuming you did celebrate. I actually took a few, few days off from making content on the channel to go visit my family for Christmas, but now I'm back and ready for the end of the year push. We're going to hopefully have a strong finish to the channel, or to the, to the year on the channel, and hopefully you'll stick around for that. Coming back to that, we're going to make a, another video today on another playthrough of Cartographers from Thunderworks Games. In this game, we're map makers for an empress who's trying to chart a new land. Now, I was full of disclosure. I was actually deciding if I was going to make a video today or not. Given that I was in the car for about three and a half hours, I very easily could have decided not to make a video today. Just take some time, take the day off, and give myself some time to rest and get ready for another big game video that I've got lined up for tomorrow. But we're going to go ahead and go ahead with this video. So, let's move over to the main game board and set our objectives. Cartographers is played over the course of the four seasons, where we'll have spring, then summer, then fall, and then finally winter. We'll score on these on the four objectives that we're about to draw out. So the spring will score first on objectives A and B, and there will be eight time in the season. That's what that indicates. Well, that'll make more sense when we get into the game, but let's really reveal our objectives. I set these up randomly. So objective A will be based around our forests. We'll give these a shuffle. And a cut. And this is what our objective around the forest is going to be. Our objective here. It's going to be green bow. Earn one reputation point for each row and column with at least one forest space. The same forest space may be scored in a row and a column. The number down here in the lower right corner. We'll come back to that at the end of the game. <clears throat> Objective B is focusing around the villages. We'll give these a shuffle as well. And a cut, and there's our objective for B. So our objective for season B is caravansary. Choose a cluster of village spaces and earn one reputation point for each row and column that contains a space from that cluster. So we'll want to make a fairly sizable cluster of our village spaces. Looking at C, this one's focusing around farms and water. So let's take a look here and see what our objective is. <clears throat> Our objective around that. The Golden Granary. Earn one reputation point for each water space adjacent to a ruined space, and earn three for each farm space on a ruined space. So we'll want to try to get water adjacent and farms on, on ruins. And space D is usually about something to do with the board. So let's give these a shuffle. And a cut, and we'll see what our objective around the borders is. Dwarven Holds. Earn seven reputation stars for each complete row or complete column of filled space that contains a mountain space. So we want to be doing something with the mountains. And just to take a quick look at what the sheet is that we're going to be playing on, here's what that looks like. So it's going to be dealing... So Dwarven Holds basically wants the row and column around each mountain space to be completely filled. No guarantee we'll get to that, but I think everything's set for this game, so I'm going to put that right there. I'll position, I'll remove, I'll move the camera just a bit. That should work. And with that, I think we're all set to get into this game, so let's jump in and start drawing on ourselves a new map.
Spring is focusing around the forests and the villages. So let's see what our first terrain card is here. Orchard for two time. So we can use this L shape to draw either a forest or a farm. And I think we're going to start off with a forest. So we're going to draw the forest. Where are we going to put it? I think we're going to start it right here. Might be a little bit hard to see, but I'm going to put it here. I'm also drawing it somewhat of a weird angle. Okay. There's our forest along with our terrible art. Our next spa our next card here. This one has to go on a temple ruins. If it's farm, I'm probably going to put it on one of the ruins spaces. But let's see what we've got here. It is a garden. We do have an option of either a garden, of a forest, or a farm. And this actually has to go on a ruins space. Um. Hmm. Well, we're not scoring on on farms until until the until summer at the earliest, and we're scoring on forests now for each row and column with at least one. I think we're going to put this right down here over this ruin space. Right there's where our newest forest went, the Wildwood Garden. So we're at four time of eight right now in the spring. Our next card. A rift land, which takes no time. We can draw one by one anywhere. And for each row and column with at least one forest space. I think we're going to go ahead and close this in as a forest. All right, and th fortunately that cost us no time. So let's see what our next card is. We're still at four of eight. Another one that's got to go over ruins. Let's see what we can do here. This one gives us another choice, either either a village or water. It's a fishing village and it's a four, four straight piece, but it's got to go over ruins. Um, I think now we start setting up the village. So, I'm going to put the village over top of this ruin, so we're starting to cover the, so we're starting to cover up the, up this coin. Actually, I could put it, no. So there's our village. We're at six of eight time now. So this is, so if this is a two, this is our last card for spring. It's a cobbled onslaught. So these work a little bit different. We have to start from the bottom left corner of the board, and be able to draw, and draw that. Try to draw that shape in, which from the bottom of the, which from the bottom left corner of the board, we can very easily draw that in. I'm just going to say cobbled because I'm not trying to draw that symbol. Then that comes out. And now that's a problem because now we can we can lose points for any unfilled space around it. So now I need to keep an eye on trying to fill some of that in. Our next card is a once is a one time. So we have an option here. We can either take the we can either take a two by two with a one by two in the middle. Actually, it's a three by two forest with a one by two empty, or take the take a three shaped piece like that and take a coin, which I think we're going to take the three piece coin, the three piece for a coin. I'm going to put that down here. Right, 
so that's where I put that's where I put the forest down, partly so it'll help me out a little bit more with scoring the green bow, but it'll also close off two of the spaces from the cobbled attack. Also, I get a coin for that. Silly me. And then here's what's likely to be our last card for the season at seven time. Seven of eight. It's actually not. We have another single space, so we can draw in any type of terrain we want. And I think I'm gonna fill in I think I'm gonna fill in this ruined space and I'm gonna put a farm there. Mostly so I can score on golden granary when that comes up starting in the summer. So now likely to be our last card. There's a hinterland stream, that'll do it for the season. Um I could draw it here. And I would earn one reputation point for each water space adjacent to a ruin space. And indeed, if I draw it here, that would just, that would completely close off the cobbled attack. And I think that's where we're going to go with. So I'm going to close that here. Which also gives me an extra coin. And I'll make that water. Actually, that doesn't give me the coin because I have to close off the other side. But two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have gone over time for spring, so now we're scoring for. So now we're scoring for spring. We've got the green bow and the caravansary that we're scoring for. So green bow scores us one reputation point for each row and column with at least one forest space. And the same forest space may be scored in both a row and a column. So we have, we'll score the columns first. One doesn't have a forest, two does, three does, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nothing there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then the rows, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we're already scoring eleven points there. Plus the Caravansary, choose a cluster of village spaces. We're going to go with our only cluster of village spaces right now. Earn one reputation star for each row and column that contains a space from that cluster. So we're earning a total of five points from that. One column by four rows. Four plus one for the coin. And we don't lose any victory points on monsters because we managed to cover up the monster space. So that'll give us a total of 16 victory points. Then we'll score for objective A later in the game, but we're not quite done with it yet. Actually, I want to put it... We'll just leave it there. Once we're not scoring an objective anymore, then I'll move it off. So now we'll add a fresh assault to the deck, or a fresh ambush. Along with all the discards, we'll give this another shuffle up. All right, there's our cut. Now we are done with spring. So summer we're scoring for BC. We're scoring for the Caravansary and for the Golden Granary. Our first space up here. There's a Forgotten Forest. We can either take a two, an offset square or take, the, or take a one by one and get a coin for that. Um... I think we're going to take the one by one, put it here, and then that'll give us another coin. That'll give us two coins, actually, because we'll get one for taking a smaller design and another one for closing off this mountain space. So we'll do it that way. So we get a coin for closing off the mountain, and another one because we took the smaller design. That's one of eight times. So next card up in summer is a homestead for two time. We can take the, we've got the, that Tetris piece, and we can either take a village or a farm with that. And I think we're going to take the, 
village. We're going to make that cluster, we're going to make our village cluster a bit bigger. We're going to make this, we're going to put a village right here. To make our caravansary a bit stronger. All right, so we're up to three of eight time now. Next card up. A treetop village for two time. We can make that, we can make that uh, village even bigger or potentially strengthen our green bow. Um, do I want to take the... Hmm, this is a tough decision because if I take the... Hmm. Actually, either way, I'm probably going to put it here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that shape now. I gotta go. Wait a minute. No, that's that's, that's got to get cut right here. So I'm picking up. The, I'm picking up this this coin either way. The only question is which one. Let's see. That would give me one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That'll give me 10 points. Actually, I'd probably pick up 10 points either way. So I'm going to take the carrot. I'm going to take the village. Yeah. So I should have one, two, three. Four, four coins is what I should have right now, which puts me at five of eight time. So our next card here is pasture. I can either take an offset square or take two blank spaces and take another coin, which I think... And I could set myself up with another ruins, with another farm space. So I think I'll do that. I think I'll take the... I think I'll put it right here. Start working on this coin, which will also give me another coin because I used a smaller design. We're at six times, so we have two left. So we have two time left, which means we're, as soon as we flip a two time card, we're just done with the summer. So let's see what happens here. We find it's an insectoid invasion. This one's starting from the lower left or from the lower, the upper left of the board which we can draw in. So we've got to draw it up here. Oop. That needs to go. This is why I don't like playing these roll and rights in pen. So we're going to go, actually this is going to be insectoid. The problem here is now we need a one by one, which we've seen there are a couple of in the deck. To be able to fill that one in. Let's see what we get here. We're still at six of eight time for the summer. And now we're at eight of eight time. So what do we want here? Um, actually, I think we're going to take the I think we're going to take the frontier. I think we're going to take the frontier dwelling with a with an extra big T shape as a village. So we're going to put that right here. All right, and then one, two, four, six, eight times. So we're done with summer which means we're scoring. So for Caravansary, we're taking this cluster right here, obviously. So rows and columns that contain a space of the cluster, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 10, 11, 12, for B, plus C is one reputation star for each water space adjacent to a ruins, and three for each farm on it, on ruins. So... We've got one water adjacent, 
and two farms on, which will give us another seven victory points, plus five coins, minus three, four, minus one, two, three, for monster spaces uncovered. So minus two, that'll be 21 points from, from summer. So now we're not scoring on Caravansary again. I'll put that down here. We'll shuffle these back in, along with a new, a new invasion card. Or new ambush, I should say. Then when we come back, we'll be heading, we'll, have, we'll, we'll be done with summer once I get this shuffled up. All right, we're done with summer, which means we'll have seven time in the fall, but I'm going to take a small break before we jump into the fall. Fall only has seven time in it, and we're scoring on the golden granary and for completed columns that have mountain spaces in them. So let's see what we can do about some of these. First card up. Is a rift lands. Oh, that's perfect because that'll let us close off the in, the insectoid the insectoid invasion for no time. So I think what we'll do there is we'll make we'll deal with this space first. This space in the very upper left corner. What do I want to put there? I'm going to put a forest there because that'll help me with the that'll help me with green bow when that comes up again for end game scoring. So we're still at zero of seven time in the fall. Next card up for the fall is a rain of fire. So we have to destroy two spaces. We either, so we have to destroy spaces. They count as filled terrain, but they don't have any terrain type in them. We either take two singles or we can use an L-shaped piece to get a coin out of that. The question is, do I want a... So I want an L-shaped piece out of that, and the answer, I think, is... Actually, yes, because once again, I would get two coins out of that, depending on where I place this. And I think I'm going to place it... I think I'm going to place it down here to give myself another coin. So what I'm going to do there... I'm going to draw X's through those. So there's our destroyed terrain. Once again, I got the coin because I filled in all of the adjacent spaces. We're at one of seven time here, so next up. Actually, I got two coins because I not only filled in the one, but the L shape had a coin on it. Next up. There's another fishing village, so I can take a line piece and fill that in anywhere, and fill that in somewhere. It's either, a, it'll either be a village or water. It doesn't need to be a village because now I don't care about the caravansary anymore. What I do care about though is potentially filling in this row so I can actually score some points off of Dwarven Holds, which I think I will do. So I'm going to take that as water and I'll show you where I'm going with it in a second. So I took the straight piece and made it water, which will give me a victory point here, but more importantly, it'll let me fill that row in completely. So now we're at three of seven time in the fall, our next card up. There's a wildwood garden for two more time. We can either, we'll take the off-shaped piece and we can either use it as a forest or a farm. And, hmm, where do we want this one? Um. I think we're actually going to take it as a farm and finish closing off the insectoid invasion. Because that'll also give me a farm space on a ruin since we're scoring that again this round. Okay, that's all closed up. So we're on five of seven time right now. 
which means if this is a two time, the season is just over. It's a one time, we can either take an off, off shape square or two singles with a blank in between for a coin and it has to be farmland. Um, farmland. Where would I want that is my next question. Um, I could work on surrounding this coin a little bit more. Hmm. Actually, we're going to put it right here. So we're going to put a farm over this ruin space. And now we're at six of seven time. So our last card, likely, is the Forgotten Forest. We can either take an off, off shape square or two singles diagonal like that with and get a coin. Um, the problem is I can't get another coin, which I usually like daisy chaining into. But I can definitely set myself up for more points on... Can I set myself up for more points? Um... Actually, yes, I can. If I put the... Um, yeah, we'll put it, we'll put it down here and set myself up to, hold on, I've, I've been assuming I get the coin if I cover everything adjacent. I'm just double checking, but... Four adjacent spaces, okay. Right, so, and we are in, well, this this is the end of the season, this is the end of fall, so I'm just deciding where I want to, what shape I want to use and where I want to put it. Um, I think I am going to take the coin, and I'm going to put it down here. I was thinking about putting it way down, I was initially thinking about putting the smaller design here, but I think I'll do better if I take the... If I, actually, I could take, if I take the smaller design and put it here, that'll give me two more points. Actually, either way will give me two more points, but I'm going to use the smaller design because I want the coin. Especially since we're getting ready to score for forests again. All right, then I'll circle the coin, and then that will do it for the round. So... Let's go ahead and score for the Golden Granary and Dwarven, or Dwarven Holds. So the Golden Granary is a water adjacent to ruins and farms on ruins. So let's look at water on, adjacent to ruins first. I've got one, two, there. And farms on, farms on ruins, I have one, two, three, four. So I had one, two, water adjacent and four on. So that's 14 points from that objective. Plus seven reputation points for each complete row or column on filled space of filled spaces with a mountain, which I have just the one, so that'll be seven points there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight coins, and no filled in monster spaces. <clears throat> Twenty-five, twenty-nine points. So we're not sco scoring on the golden granary anymore, and falls done. We'll take a new ambush. And we'll get ready for winter, where we only have six time, six time in winter. Once we finish winter, the game will be over. And this time we're scoring on forests, on forest columns and rows, and for completed mountain rows. Mountain rows and columns. All right, we are all set there. We only have six time to work with, though. So, let's see what we can do here. First card up is a two-timer with a fishing village, either a either as water or as 
a village, and I don't really care about either one of those. So I think with that in mind, is there anywhere where we would just get the points outright? Mm. Yes, actually, there is a space where we get the points outright. I think if we put it down here, we would just get, yep, we would just get the points outright for that, so that's where I'm going to go with it. It doesn't really matter what terrain type it is, because neither one is being scored on. So I'll just take it as water, because why not? What I'm more concerned about here is filling in the column with the mountain in it, so now we'll be scoring for that. Our next card up, we're at two of six time in the winter, is a farmland. We can either use a, use a one by two and get a coin, or take it as that sh shape with three, basically three lines in perpendicular, two lines in perpendicular. Um, is there anywhere I can even draw the three and perpendicular, and two threes in perpendicular. I don't think there is. So I think I just work on filling in another row or column with a mountain space on it. I think we'll work on, I think we're going to work on this row right here. There's only three left there. So I'll fill that in there. Oop. Yep, okay. So we've got two there, but I do get the coin because I use the coin designated design. We're at three of six time in the winter. And we've got a hamlet, a village hamlet. So we can either take a five shape like that or a three like that and get another coin. I think that actually worked out for us because that gives us the... Because if we take the village here and take the smaller one, then we'll get the... And we can get the get another row, uh, another mountain row filled, which I think we'll do. And then I'll take another coin for that, and that gives us another filled in row, filled in another filled in row or column. So it's likely to be we're at four of six time in the winter. We're at five now. We can either take diagonals like that for a coin, or a Tetris piece like that. Um, is there anything that helps me toward filling in another mountain row? Next question is, am I even going to be able to fill in another mountain row? The answer to that is almost certainly no. So I think I'm just going to grab a coin by filling in, by going right, um, let's actually do it this way. We'll take the smaller piece and get two coins out of it. One for the design, another for filling in a last mountain space. Speaking of last, unless this is a zero time space, this is our last card of the game. It's actually a destruction space, a lava flow where we've got to fill in a we've got to fill in a one by three grid. Um I could actually set myself up if I get the right shape and I if I put it here and I get the right shape, I could fill in another mountain row down here which would give me another point, so I think we'll do that. And we're still looking at 5 of 6 time. Actually, we're still at 5 of 6, and it's a 1 by 1, so... I think we're just going to fill in here and get another filled mountain row. And I don't think it really matters... It doesn't really matter what I fill it in with, so I'm just going to fill it in with forest. We're still at 5 of 6 time here. Actually, yeah, 5 of 6. Next one's got to go over Temple Ruins, but I, but I believe if they're all covered, 
We draw a one by one square anywhere on the map and fill it with any terrain type. So the next terrain type is a hillside terrace, which would be two time and that will be the end of the game. So since I can't legally draw over a ruined space, I can draw a one by one anywhere, but I can't get, I can't get to another filled row. So I think I'll just fill in here. So we're going to E1 to make that a water space, and then that's the end of the game. So, we'll let's go ahead and score for the winter, and then we'll move into final scoring. Looking at the Dwarven Holds, seven reputation points for each complete row or column of filled spaces. So B is a mountain row that's completely filled, as is C. As for columns, three and four are both completely filled. So that's 28 points on that objective. Plus on forests, that's one point for each row and column with at least one. So row one has a forest, row two, or column one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then for rows A, B, C, F, G, J, and K. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15. Plus for coins, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Plus no uncovered monster spaces. Total there is going to be 40, 55, which will all total to a grand total of right, 50 and... Wow, 50 and 81 is 131. But we're not quite done yet because now we'll move into endgame scoring and it's scored a little bit differently in the solo game. Alright, endgame scoring. This is where those stars in the bottom right corner of each card come into play. So Green Bow has a score of 22. Plus 16 is 37. Plus 20 is 57. Plus 28 is 85. Subtract, one, subtract 85 from 131. I get... Sounds like 47, but I'm going to double... No, 46, but I'm going to double check that. That is a much better score than I got the first time I played this on the channel. Yep, 46, which should give me a much better title. Wow, yeah, that will give me a much better title. This time, I'm going to make Legendary Cartographer on that one. That kind of worked pretty... That worked a lot better than the first time we put this on the channel, but... That will do it for this playthrough of Cartographers. Tomorrow I'm expecting to have a fairly busy day on the channel. I do have to run an errand in the middle of the day, but that won't impact any recording I'm doing. Tomorrow morning I'm going to lead off by playing Space Empires 4X from GMT Games. As for tomorrow afternoon, right now I'm expecting to have a debut game on the channel, and one I've been working on for a while, as we play Warfighter in the World War II setting from Danvers and Games. Thank you for watching the video. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so you get my content. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care everyone.